Well then, so I picked up this guitar and I wanted to document it because I have found almost no information about it on the web and um, a couple of blog posts from 15 years ago and no information on YouTube. And, uh, and you know, this is kind of the point of the YouTube is the knowledge thing. So this is a, I picked this up a while back, this is a Carter. And apparently, best I can find out, was made by a guy named Don Carter. Look, Don and Peg. Peg was his wife. Her name is uh, on other a couple of other documents I got with this. Call me anytime. Thank you, Peg Carter. On the stuff I found out online that the Peg died and Don retired, they're in Ontario. So this is a Canadian guitar. And at first, I, I kind of picked this up in a sort of a trade deal. I did not care for it. I thought it was a little bit dull sounding. But I have since come to like it. And um, it is beautifully made. Um, it is not, as far as I can tell, it's all handmade. I can't imagine <clears throat> the dude had uh, wherewithal for CNC stuff. It has a serial number on it. I don't know if you can see that there on the block. Serial number 0108. So. Did the guy make 108 instruments? This The dates on the case candy is 2001, so this entered the U.S. in 2001. I don't know how old it is. It has not been played much. And for myself, I like a, a good, especially acoustic guitar that needs beat-to-death played because that's the good one. The perfect mint one is the one that sat under a bed because nobody fell in love with it. Anyway, you're not interested in the story. You're interested in the thing. That's a beautiful inlay. Um... Really, really nice work. I do not care for this headstock shape. It's a little, kind of a little wilted wiener thing. Um, but, you know, you got to take the good with the bad. But the the woods and the craftsmanship on this thing are, uh, you know, as good as anything. Uh, I don't know how I feel about the black tuners. I mean, you know, for a metal band. But um, especially if you take a procto mirror and get inside it, it's really quite lovely. It has, I do like that, the way he's done the rosette with a different wood. And pretty standard stuff. Dreadnought, spruce, I assume. Don't know what kind. Don't really care. The, the finish on it is a little bit, um, or the stain, rather, is a little bit opaque. I don't know if that's on purpose, but it's also, even through the body sides, it's opaque. And I, I think he was going for something a little bit different. But it is a quite a quality instrument. And if you get inside there... Uh, it is beautifully made with no glue and very nice joinery. Really well done. That's all I know about it. Um, I'm about to put, you know, it's got 20-year-old strings on it. It sounds okay. It sounds pretty good, actually. Um, but I'm going to experiment with it. And I don't know. I get very uh, persnickety about acoustics. But this one might be a keeper. Certainly never seen anything else like it. Good old Don Carter. Uh, out of somewhere near Toronto, somewhere near Buffalo, I guess, because the it was imported through Sarnia, which is near Buffalo. So, but lovely instrument, pretty, pretty, pretty nice. Well, we live and learn, and that's that combined with one blog post is about all you're going to find out about Carter guitars on the web, at least, at least from my perspective. He did a very nice job on that, though. The, the I guess the other problem it's important to point out is that when you search for Carter guitars, you end up with uh, Carter guitars in Nashville, and you get tons of pages and stuff on that, as you would expect, but it makes it difficult to, to search for this guy. So, party on, kids.